data to boss with Chase Harmer. Growth, scale, success. In today's podcast, I have the pleasure of interviewing Ben Cagle. Ben has built a substantial business in the online marketing space. And also just bought a satin black Lamborghini, which is the sexiest thing that I've ever seen, showing that hard work really pays off. I've had the pleasure of knowing Ben for a couple of years and seeing how Monster Ads has grown and developed and gained brand recognition in the advertising and affiliate marketing business. And also known for his parties called the Affiliate Ball, which he puts on in New York and Las Vegas, drawing big name artists and top talent, both in the advertising and the affiliate marketing verticals. Um, ben, you have grown Monster Ads into a force, force to reckon with, and I want you to tell me a little bit about your background, what you did before Monster Ads, and what you saw when you created Monster Ads that allowed you to carve out this niche and really grow it to what it is today. Hey, Chase. Thanks for the time and uh, the opportunity for the interview, man. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, it's kind of a funny story. Uh, back in... 2000, I started a landscape design irrigation company, and I had that company for, uh, I don't know, I guess maybe seven or eight years. And um, we started doing residential, got into commercial, and was mainly doing commercial. We just did installations. We didn't do any lawn maintenance or anything like that. We just did plants, trees, irrigation, and stuff. But we really got into the commercial side of it and started doing work for the government. And when Obama came in, uh, money had to be cut. You know, times are really tight, the economy, the recession, um, everything kind of slowed down. And he pulled some jobs for me and ultimately ended up losing that company um, within a few months after he was in office. Okay. At the same token, I uh, invested uh, a pretty good amount of money into a buy or pay here six months prior to that. And um, I was wanting to, you know, venture into some other opportunities and stuff. And so I, I, I invested into a car lot. And... Um, six months after I lost the first business, he did the cash for clunkers and, um, that caused all of the cars that we were buying at the auctions to triple. And I lost that company as well. And at the time I didn't even know how to type. I didn't really know a lot about the internet. And, um, I, um, was losing, you know, I couldn't get any work. I was sending resumes all around the country. I had a great portfolio of work, but nobody could afford me. Nobody had any work. Um, and so, I sat down with my wife. We had a big meeting and uh, pretty emotional. And um, we were about 90 days late on our cars and uh, going through all of our, our all of our all of our savings. And um, I told her, I said, we got two opportunities here. I can go load boxes, you know, three shifts. I won't sleep, but we're only going to bring home, you know, five or six thousand dollars a month. We're going to scale our life down, or I can go into this computer into my office and try to figure out how to make money on the internet. And she thought I was crazy. <laughs> and uh, Ultimately, that's the way I decided to go. I locked myself up. I gave up all my friendships, all of my hobbies, and um, I didn't come out for four or five years. Wow. And um, I ultimately, I, I made $30,000 my first month. I was able to save my cars, um, save my house, save my family. And um, kind of the rest was history from there. I, I could see after about the first two or three weeks that I was in involved in doing affiliate marketing, which is where I started initially, um, where the future could go and how much money I could, I could make. And I realized that all I needed to do was sit there for hours and hours and hours and hours. And the, the more hours I sat there, the faster I could make it happen. So I never wanted to give up. I always decided if I could just stay here and never come out, you know, um, the future would be, you know, really bright. And that's kind of history from that, from there. That's crazy. That's a crazy story. So, you know, I always hear, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs, you hear these stories, right? You hear about the guy that was the construction worker or, or whatever, he got laid off and, you know, he's about to lose the house and then he made uh, all this money. I mean, how do you go from a guy that doesn't even know computers, right, to this guy to make $30,000 his first month? I mean, tell me about that first month. How did that happen? What, 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 yeah, tell me about that. 
the first month when I got involved, I started researching, you know, the first day I went to my computer, I typed in Google how to make money online. That would have been like the easiest thing anybody could have, you know, put in. I didn't have any money, so there was a lot of gurus even back then that were trying to sell different types of things and stuff, but I didn't have the money to pay for it, so I had to find every means of information I could that was free, and so I would go to forums, and um, I used to go to Digital Point, and there's some other forums that I used to go to, and um, I actually started my own forum because I realized that there was going to be millions of other other people just like me that were looking for work and there was we needed a place to discuss it so I built a forum called moneymakerdiscussion.com and at one time it was like 600 on Alexa it just had crazy amount of traffic and it really blew up fast and you know kind of that's actually where I kind of got my following and my start um, was from the internet marketing uh, community from the forum that I built um, but it's um, it's it's been a ride for me. Uh, but in the very beginning, I started doing uh, uh, Amazon and EPN, which is eBay's affiliate network. What were you and, selling uh, on? Uh, what were you selling on Amazon? Uh, well, we, I was building a lot of different blog sites, and I was getting traffic through uh, automation. Through we would build tools to be able to create any create anything that you could do manually. We did it multi-threaded through applications. Um, and so there was a time there when. We were getting so much traffic from Twitter that people didn't really know how to convert that well that we were able to figure out how to convert. Um, and with eBay's affiliate network and Amazon's affiliate network, you really just need to get somebody to your page where it drops a cookie on them and they stay your affiliate for X amount of days. eBay was like seven days back then and Amazon was 24 hours. Um, so within 24 hours, anybody coming to your site, if they went to Amazon or they went anywhere to buy anything from Amazon, whatever it was, you made a percentage depending upon um, what type of product it is so, that they purchased. So only for 24 hours? So what happens after 24 hours? you got to recreate that new person again? or to, to create exactly. for, for Amazon, right. But, right. but eBay, we really focused hard on eBay in the beginning because it was a seven-day pixel, um, a seven-day cookie. So um, that was um, – Really, where most of our focus was, we still did pretty good. I think I probably, I probably made seventy five percent of the money, you know, my first six months from eBay, and I'd say the other twenty five percent was from Amazon. We did end up getting really good at Amazon for a while, um, and then of course I started figuring out that affiliate networks and uh, pulling offers and marketing to offers were a lot easier um, and um, much more lucrative. Um, to convert people through different types of products on affiliate networks. And, um, of and course, so when, that's you say, gonna... when you say affiliate yeah. networks, and just so people understand what the affiliate networks are, affiliates are the guys that push the traffic and, uh, and create the revenue stream, right? Those are the guys that push the traffic to that's the, right. the end that's business right. owner? Okay. That's right. Okay, yeah. Yeah. so go ahead. So you started. And then, to the, and then the network, of course, which is kind of like what I own. I own a couple of different networks. Mm -hmm. um, we are just the intermediary normally between the advertiser or the merchant and the affiliates. So affiliates, they may have the means of understanding how to get the traffic, but a lot of times they don't have the products. They don't own their own product. They don't understand processing, merchants uh, processing, and you know gateways, and under, they don't have customer support, fulfillment, and all the things that are needed to, to be a merchant, gotcha. but they have the traffic. So... Um, you know, both go kind of hand in hand, um, but we're kind of in the middle uh, by having the, the, the merchants come to us, put the offers on our network, and then, of course, the affiliates can have something that they can promote depending upon the vertical and whatever niche of traffic sources they have. Sure. So when you started this off, you started it by yourself. Did you ever take on a partner along the way, or did you, did you completely uh, just do it all on your own and, and grow to get the affiliate growth that way, or did you? It was there a point along the way where you had to involve a partner, or got well, it's kind of it's really funny how this whole thing came about because um, initially in the very beginning I started um, a, a network ten years ago called MMD Cash. It, it just goes after after Money Maker Discussions, the abbreviation for MMD, um, and there was a there was a a lot of people back then in the dating. Uh, vertical that people would start networks and they would scam people. And what I noticed was on my forum where people were posting a lot of screenshots of substantial amount of money, of, of money that they made, and the networks would just be a fly-by-night company. They would just pop up and they would be gone. And so it hit me one day. I said, you know, what if I built a network and I built it with, you know, some morals and ethics like a business should be, you know, built, and, and I didn't scam anybody and I actually treated people fair and I actually – didn't shave them or scrub them. And um, what would happen if I built something that, you know, 
Nobody else had. So that's what I went and did. I went and built MMD Cash, and all those guys are dating, uh, dating affiliates. Right. And so, you know, it took about six months before it really started to gain a lot of traction and then, you know, in a year and then, and it, and it takes time for people to, to trust and to find the loyalty. And, right. um, when I started my net zero payments, that's yeah. when it really kicked off. So net zero payments, payments is, is, is what? That's a division of, of monster ads or what is, what is net? Well, the net zero payments is what I started over on MMD cash. Okay. And what that was is a lot of people pay, you know, bi-weekly every two weeks. A lot of people will pay monthly. Some will pay like net seven, which is like, you know, seven days after the cutoff date. And so I started with, we, we have such a good grip on fraud and we're able to tell so fast on fraud uh-huh. um, with, with MMD cash and the traffic because we've been doing it for so many years that it's almost impossible to for us to pay somebody for fraudulent traffic because of everything that we've implemented. So I was able to pay my, my affiliates faster than anybody else. You would literally send me traffic from Monday to Sunday, and then on Monday you would get paid the next day. Um, and because of that, it built – I built a, a huge affiliate base, and we started. I started getting a lot of affiliates, and I owned that by myself. Then I decided there's a lot of other, you know, mainstream offers and things out there that my same affiliates were pushing to other networks, as well as dating paper lead, which I didn't have on MMD Cash. A lot of other offers and things that I didn't have on that site, but it was going to take a lot more for me to run that. So I met up with Chris Patrick. I knew, I knew him for a couple of years sure. on through my forum and things like that. And he used to be a VP of a, uh, a mortgage company and um, came from a background of corporate. And I'm more of kind of on the pulse kind of guy. And I thought it would be a great you know partnership to have somebody organized uh, like him that came from a corporate world. Even though I don't, I'm not really a corporate kind of guy. I don't, we don't really run our companies corporate, but. Him having that background and structure, uh, it was really enticing to me and his work ethic. And so he and I started uh, Monster Ads together. Okay. And he handles he handles all the operations um, and he pretty much runs the entire network. And I bring in new new business. Um, I, I, I'm the investor in the in the network. Gotcha. And um, when, did, when was uh, so you know obviously you, you started all this. You did the net zero. You, you had this. Uh, this growth of, of success and all this past history. When did DeMar- Monster Ads actually start? When was it like uh, formulated? Um, well, it's funny because in the beginning when we started the network, it used to be called Society Invite. And it was okay. an invitation only network. It was kind of underground. And I didn't, I was never looking to go mainstream like high public um, you know, I, I really didn't, I had so many affiliates for MMD Cash that I moved over that I didn't really need, um, to be out, you know, as a, as a, as a public network that anybody could just come and join. It was just for mainly high volume publishers that were sending us a lot of traffic on MMD Cash that I kind of merged over and took another set of their traffic that I wasn't getting somewhere else. Once, once uh, we decided that we moved the companies to Puerto Rico and we decided that we were going to go a little bit more mainstream and we wanted to bring in um, a lot of other different verticals into the network, different types of products and different types of merchants. And we didn't want to have like this privatized uh, brand uh, kind of attached to us anymore. Uh, we bought a new domain. We, re- we rebranded the entire network and we went with Monster Ads in 2000. Um, so the whole thing was created in 2011. Okay, well, well, you guys have had massive growth since then, so that's that's amazing. Um, you know, and at, and at Monster Ads, you had talked earlier about you you work in the dating space. That's one of the verticals that you guys are are in and, and, and have a big impact in. And how do you how do you guys at Monster Ads? Um, there are so many verticals that you can focus your time and energy. Um, what are the certain verticals that you guys focus on more than others, um, and that your affiliates are more interested in pushing, or is it all about the money, or what what is what's the what is the um, the verticals and what's the motivation to go after those particular verticals? You know, we kind of kind of we kind of go with where our affiliates are kind of going because we already we've already built the relationship with them. We already know that their traffic and the stuff that they're sending is is legitimate traffic, and it's, we kind of go where the pulse is of the next thing. And a lot of that's kind of geared us more towards health and beauty and Nutra, gotcha. um, and we've been bringing in a lot of that new stuff. 
Um, but at the same token, you know, we've really been focusing on mainly now just building our own offers. Um, and we've got a lot of them in the pipeline. We're getting ready to launch um, some really, really cool, innovative stuff, stuff that not everybody else has. And um, not just, you know, the same stuff that everybody's, you know, beaten around. Um, we want to come up with new quality white hat offers that people can, they don't have to worry about losing their Facebook accounts and, you know, marketing any type of black hat stuff. Um, where they, we just want to keep everything clean and we're really moving towards just owning our own offers and being more of an ad agency company instead of so much, um, just a run of the mill network that brokers offers from other places. Or, you know, we're only focused on agency of record offers, you know, AORs, exclusives, and of course our own offers. Now. And, and to somebody from the outside looking in that doesn't understand, what is, what is it, what is, what, what is an ad agency? What does that mean uh, to, to someone like that? I mean, what's, what does an ad agency do other than what you're doing today, right? What's the difference? An ad agency is, is where we can, we can help someone who's a merchant that, 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 that doesn't have processing, that doesn't know how to create landing pages, that has a product, that has a great idea, but they don't really have anything else to go with it. Maybe they have the funds, which of course that's normally needed. Um, they have the they have the investment, they have the liquidity, they have they have the, the, the idea, they have the product, but they don't know how to do anything else. So we're able to come in and source everything for them from the processing all the way down to fulfillment, which is their shipping, uh, to their customer support. You know, that could be 24-7 around the clock. Um, we can help them if, if they want to go international and ship all over the world, just in the US, just in Canada. Um, and then of course we can fulfill them with the traffic as well. So they're a complete one-stop shop. That's awesome. That's amazing. So, I mean, what what is it, you know, and I'll kind of switch this up. I mean, because you've had all this growth and you, you do all this great stuff, but obviously it's been, it's been a learning process. I mean, you have an amazing story where you you locked yourself in a room and, and were able to make $30,000 a month, which is completely incredible. Um you know, and it's still, you know, it's still one of those stories, you know, that you see, like, and you hear about, but you just can't believe it. Um, but you did it. Um, that obviously is what makes you special. You have that drive to, to, to make that happen. But what's been the toughest thing that you faced in growing the business? I mean, many guys in your the affiliate space or advertising marketing space face challenges that uh, are not seen in, in other business. I mean, what is the toughest challenge that uh, you've seen in your, your particular business and, and how does uh, – you know, monster ads help that make e make it easier for for someone in that space. I think the toughest is, and this goes for all networks, and especially brand new networks when they're brand new and they first start off. There's there's so much gray out there. There's so much bad. There's so much there's there's more bad. It seems like of like fraudulent traffic and botting and all different types of um, things that people are trying to get over on merchants. That people get greedy. And I think the toughest thing is waiting it out. And it's easier to find 10 affiliates that are bad than it is to find one good one. And it takes years and it takes time and it takes, it takes uh, loyalty. A lot of these, the, the quality publishers out there are with other networks that have been around longer than even us. And we've been around a long time. And in the beginning, it's really hard to get your foot in, foot in the door. And that's almost with any business, um, especially this type of business where someone, you know, having to worry about you paying them or not and you're a brand new business and you don't have, you know, a past history of payment record. Um, I think for me and I think for anybody else is, is time. You know, you need to, you have to wait your turn and you need to be, you, you need to be, you know, the person that you say you are and you need to run, run a company like a company and you need to be, um, you know, you got to hold yourself accountable. Right. I think this is, is the biggest thing, man. You got to do what you say. Absolutely. I mean, and, and obviously, that's, I think that's a key for any business, no matter if that's in the affiliate space or whatever business that person or individual might be pursuing. Um, you know, what would you tell someone that wants to be involved in a business like yours? I mean, what is the key to becoming successful outside of, the, of what you just stated? Um, you need to save some money. Uh, you're going to need to be able to float money to affiliates um, because merchants sometimes don't have the money, you know, to be able to pay you as quick as you're going to want to be able to pay your affiliates to allow them to scale. A lot of these guys are buying Facebook traffic or PPV or maybe they're emailers or whatever it is, but there's a cost to affiliate marketing. There's, you know, nothing is just completely free. So these affiliates are having to spend their own money and the quicker that you can get them paid, the faster they can double up, you know, on what it is that they're spending. They can scale quicker. 
Um, so you definitely have to, you know, save up some money. Okay. So is, is, as an affiliate or doing what you do, I mean, you, you manage a lot of different campaigns. Um, you know, do, how do you manage so many websites and campaigns and verticals at one time? How do you guys do that? You guys have a system designed to, to obviously facilitate all of that, but how do you keep your focus and energy on, on all of that? I think I um, contributed to my ADD. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I hear you. you know, for, for me, um, it used to be really tough to manage when I was younger. And, you know, of course, when I have ADHD really bad. Um, and <laughs> But for me now, you know, I'm in my 40s. I'm in my early 40s. And I've learned to kind of corral it and use it in a positive way. And I think that being creative and being able to multitask and being able to um, my drive and my motivation – um, it just allows me to be able to manage so many things and trusting the people that I have put in, we have put in place um, to be able to do their job and to be able to find your weaknesses and, uh, and, and to be able to put somebody in that place of your weakness um, is very key. Right, right. So, okay, so, you know, when, you, when you're building a program out, you know, to generate what you do, right? You, you're an ad agency, you're an affiliate marketing company. When, when you're building a company to gen, or a program to generate sales and leads and conversions, what is the part, I mean, for, for a novice or anyone that's trying to or, or do what you do, right, or, or, or work with you, right, what is the part that they need to be most focused on? Is it uh, on, a, on a, in an ad, right? And this is which, as an ad agency. I mean, coming from your point of view as a, as a resource, uh, 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 is it the ad copy? Is it the color? How do you target specific age groups or, or, or how do you go after certain – because you, you guys are creating these ads, right, creating the momentum for people to click on an ad and, and take an action, right? So what is the part that is uh, the most important to, to that piece of the puzzle? I think when you're doing when, when you're when you're depending upon if it's if it's a paper lead offer or depending upon if it's a credit card offer, um, like a paper sale offer, um, it all really comes down – to the terms, the page, you know, and how you the subconscious and how you're bringing them through the funnel, all that matters. Um, and it's, and it's, and it's, and it's kind of cohesive, but ultimately at the end of the day, in order to get somebody to put their credit card in, it all depends on the terms and the things that they're seeing and how much it's going to cost. Some are straight sell offers that are just straight to the point. They're just, you know, $99 or $85 or $45. And it says, this is what you're going to pay. And that's one way. And others are trial offers. Um, and without being deceptive, of course, and staying under the FTC, um, you know, laws and things, you know, the terms are, are, are very important in how much you're charging and your processing, your throughput. Um, there's so much to uh, generate in leads and conversions. Um, but, you know, to, for on specifically on age groups um, and, and things of that, you know, that all it comes down to the demo, the demographic, when you're targeting, like, let's say, in buying Facebook traffic, um, you can target, you know, specific groups. You can target specific age groups. You can target, um, you know, different cities. I mean, there's so much, you know, from a geo standpoint. Uh, there's so many different um, – demographics that you can target to that makes it really easy to be able to, to, to drill down um, on a, uh, you know, targeted campaign. Sure. Sure. No, that makes a lot of sense. For That makes a lot of sense. And, um, you know, for, for anyone that's, you know, looking to to do something like this, you know, from a beginner level or from an, or from an advanced level, do you feel like outsourcing this uh, to an agency like yourself, is, is that probably the most affordable way to do something like this? Um, we don't really charge a lot uh, for people that, you know, a, for, a, for a merchant that's wanting to be a merchant, a potential merchant that has a product. Um, we, 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 uh, we don't really make hardly any money in the beginning. Um, if someone comes to us and we think they have a great product, um, then and we decide that we want to take it on. We, we take it on because we feel like we can, you know, make that successful for them. If we feel like it's something that, you know, isn't going to work out and we feel like it won't be successful and the product's not going to do that great, um, then we just let them know up front that we don't think that, I, I don't want to see anybody waste their time. We don't want to waste our time. We don't want to, you know, waste anybody's money either. Um, but uh, definitely they could reach out to us and we could uh, help put everything in place for them. Okay. Well, that's great. That's great. Um, you know, and so I'm going to kind of switch it up just a little bit here. You know, I know that we had talked about, you know, hurdles and, and you know, every entrepreneur has hurdles and every every hurdle is different, I think, for every business. But 
there's a lot of things that happen in a business that sometimes make you go, oh, crap, right? Like, uh, you know, I don't know if I can make it through this. And whether you're admitting that out loud or internally, um, you know, there, there's always a point where, you know, there, there's, there's stress, right, in growing a business. I mean, what, what are some of the biggest hurdles? Or what's, what's, what was one of the biggest hurdles that when you grow in your company, um, you had to overcome, you know, that sometimes uh, that makes most business owners give up? Is there any, anything that stands out in your mind? I think the biggest for us for Monster Ads has been we were mainly in the industry known for dating and getting moving over and bringing in new advertisers and new merchants for other verticals in the beginning um, was a struggle bringing them in and not initially having the traffic. Um, so that took a little bit of you know growing pains and a lot of uh, you know new resources and, 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 and a learning curve for us, bringing in completely new a new vertical, um, multiple new verticals, and, and finding traffic for those and keeping the advertisers happy because we didn't want to waste their time by bringing their offers onto our network and not having the traffic. And, of course, now we finally are you know living up to the hype of all these new verticals that we've gotten ourselves into, and it just took some time. Um, that for me and, and, and for Chris, I would say has been the biggest, that was the biggest hurdle in this business so far. Was it just like you guys actually, you know, putting out the, the capital and the resources to try to make that transition and weren't seeing the reciprocation right away or was it just the transition itself? Um, it wasn't so much the money as it was more so Robert Stevens, head of BizDev for us, was out oh. you know, working really hard, bringing in new offers and new verticals, and him having to sell himself for saying, "Hey, listen, you know we're gonna because when you go and put a new offer and you go meet with a merchant and you you know they're gonna want to know, listen, before we waste our time, are you gonna be able to get us any traffic to this stuff? And we didn't have any traffic in the beginning because we didn't even have the offers on the network. Sure. Uh, so that for us. You know, it was so tough because we had to get the offers, and then we had to find the affiliates. And and there was there was a window there where we didn't have either. So um, getting it cohesive, you know, was the toughest part. And we have definitely um, done that now, and we are striving every day to even get more and more and more. And we're doing very well, and I'm very proud of my team. Yeah, um, no, I mean, obviously, I go to the, we go to a lot of the same events, and uh, you know, obviously, you're surrounded by a lot of the guys in that business um, that I know too, and. Uh, they all seem to be using, utilizing you and your services, so that's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, what is the motivation today? I mean, you 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 obviously you got the black side and Lambo, which again is I'm really jealous of that. Uh, but you have the boat, the cars, and you know the beautiful wife. Is it you know what do you, what is the motivation today? Is it to maintain that lifestyle that you that you've developed, or is it are you just driven by the business? You know what what is it that motivates you? It makes you get out of bed and, and, and jump out of bed excited. You know, it's definitely not the money anymore. Uh, I think for me, it's more about the hunt and the chase and the challenge. Um, I love having, I get bored very easy. If I just did one job when I was doing landscaping, you know, I was getting really, it, it was my passion. I loved it. That's why I did it. You know, I could take a yard that had, was like a blank canvas and then I could, in a week, you know, it would be like a piece of art. And I really loved that. And it was gratifying. Um, and I could walk away from it feeling proud. Um, this is a different type of business model, and uh, I feel proud for different reasons. Um, but for me, it's having something new. Every day I start coming up with a new idea or a new business model or, 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 or a new company um, and a new partnership. or you know. So it's always the new. It just keeps me alive. I'm never bored. Um, it's just ever, ever so revolving, and that is what keeps me motivated. That's people, true. you know, people, people um, in my past, in the past, what motivated me, or the people that would always say that I was never going to be able to amount to anything, and all I ever had was grandiose ideas, and I was never going to live up to, you know, half of whatever I said I was going to do. And I had a lot of um, built-up anger towards society and the people that never believed in me, and so I felt like I needed to uh, prove myself. Sure. And, and today it feels great that I don't feel like I need to prove anything to anybody because honestly, I just, I don't care as much what people think anymore because I'm so focused on the things that I'm doing in my family. Um, so, so how do you do just to touch on that, uh, since you let that gate open, I mean, when those people, I mean, did you have a lot of people that kind of doubted you and your ideas uh, about what you wanted to accomplish and how did you deal with that? 
Yeah, everybody, you know, I, every person that I would come across, you know, I, I would always be so excited about something new that I was coming up with in my mind and that I was going to try and I would do. And, you know, I just probably came across, you know, real wishy-washy and um, at the time, and, you know, rightfully so, because at the time I wasn't successful and these things seemed almost unattain you know, unattainable. And, um, and I could kind of understand where people would kind of, you know, see where, or feel that I may have been, um, you know, one way one week and one way another week. But, I mean, there was a lot of hatred and a lot of things that um, people, you know, made me feel and, and just feels good to know that the things, that my, my, my crazy ideas and things, you know, they, they, they kind of came to fruition for me. So Yeah, you know, I think my own personal uh, thing is that I always acted, you know, as if in my own mind, even though it wasn't actually reality at the time, I always thought and always believed in my mind that I was going to attain those things. And it sounds like that's kind of the same same thing for you. That, yeah, I feel like if you, if you don't ever believe and you can't ever dream that you're going to attain any of these things, then you never will. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, tell me about the fun stuff. I mean, what do you do in your free time? Do you travel, spend time with the family? What is it that uh, Ben Cable does on his free time? You know, I don't have a lot of free time. I really, honestly, <laughs> I, I, I work probably 14 or 16 hours a day. In between that, I spend time with my family. Um, I go to the gym. I leave my house once a day. I try to go five days a week and go to the gym for an hour. If I didn't do that, I would never leave my house, um, except for, you know, on the weekends. And that's when I spend most of the time with my family and my and, and um, my wife and my kids. And my son, he's in jujitsu now. And our, my daughter, she's in, she's in competition cheer. And so that takes a lot of our time throughout the week, um, running and going. Um, but then, you know, on the weekends, I, I love to, you know, take my, we, we, my wife and I go on a date night at least once a week just to kind of, you know, rekindle the week and re rekindle our marriage and just keep everything, our communication together and stuff, you know, without, without her and I happy, you know, the family wouldn't be happy. So we always try to put her and I first. That's great. That's great. You got to do that uh, to keep the marriage, uh, to the marriage and I think any relationship healthy, right? Yeah. Well, what's the story with the affiliate ball? I mean, when did you start that, and when's the next party? You know, so I didn't really start the affiliate ball. The affiliate ball, I kind of came across the affiliate ball at the first trade show I ever went to back in, God, I can't remember, uh, it was many years ago, and I just thought, wow, man, this is really cool. You know, um, I, uh, I thought one day if I could ever get my businesses big enough, you know, I'm going to be the main sponsor to this thing, and I want to uh, be able to give back to all the affiliates and, um, you know, that's kind of how it happened. And so the next year, ironically, um, I, uh, I, I met Darren Blatt and he's pretty much the one, he's the promoter and he's the one that kind of puts it together. And, um, I met him and we started talking and kind of kicked it off. And now we've got, you know, a, a great relationship. He's a really cool guy. I like Darren a lot. And from ever since then, I've been the main sponsor for every single affiliate ball. We have them twice a year, one in New York and we did one in Philly and most of the, most every year it's in Vegas one year. Um, and this year we have uh, Luda coming. Nice. And it's ludicrous. Yeah. yeah. And he's really hot right now with the Fast and the Furious stuff. And um, I hear he just puts on an amazing show and he's going to be awesome. I cannot wait for, for, yeah. for Ludicrous. But um, that's going to be July 31st at the uh, Copacabana Club in New York. Nice. We'll look forward to that. Um, what's the, so I just switched this up again and, and we're, we're on the home stretch here, but what is the, what's the best advice that you've ever received from anyone and, and why? I think the best advice I've ever received is, um, wow, that's a good one. Um, it could be anybody. I mean, the business guy, it could be your dad, uh, it could be anyone. I mean, not necessarily, but what's the best piece of advice, uh, you know, um, either business-wise or, or life-wise? I think the best advice that I've ever received from someone is online. You've only got one shot. You've only got one name. And when you lose that, when you lose your reputation, when you lose the person that you are and people – if you scam somebody, if, if, if you don't, you know, do what you say you're going to do, um, it's very easy to be blackballed from this world and this community. The Internet is such a, even though it seems so big, the people that are making up most of the money in, this, in the Internet are a small group of people. And if you can get into that small circle, you know, you want to make sure that you live up to the hype of who you are and be the person and, and, and you know, 
fall back onto your foundation of your morals and your ethics and uh, be a good person. And if you don't, and then you're easily going to be ousted and you'll be done. You might as well just unplug your PC and go back to landscaping or something. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. You know, you started this back in 2011. I mean, you're not that old, but what would you give? What advice would you give to your to your uh, 20 year old self at this point, being that you're in your early 40s? Well, I actually started this back in like 2007, I think. But, okay. Right. Well, like from from my career online. Right. Um, what would I what give myself my biggest what? Well, what what advice would you give to your 20 year old self now that you're reflecting back on your early 40s? I mean, when you were 20 years old, what would what advice would you give yourself to yourself now? As a 20 year old? That's, that's easy. Um, 20 years ago, I felt like that because I was me, whoever that person was, it was going to fall in my lap. I felt like I was entitled. I felt like sooner or later, something's just going to come and I'm just going to be, I'm going to have it all. And it wasn't until I was about 33 um, when I realized I was losing everything that I never really worked as hard as I should have and that if I was going to make anything of myself, I didn't have much time left and that I need to go and make it happen. And um, if I if I gave myself advice back then at 20 years old, I would have made it. I would have started. I would have made better choices, and I would have made it happen then. All right. Well, that's that's amazing advice. And, and Ben, uh, you know, I really thank you for your time today. Uh, it's been an amazing interview, and I think you said a lot uh, that can help a lot of the entrepreneurs that will be listening to the podcast. Uh, MonsterAds.com. You can go visit them. They're a great affiliate uh, and ad agency. And, is, and Ben, uh, is there any other contact information or anything else that you'd like to say about uh, Monster Ads before we uh, peace out of this interview? Yeah, you can contact me at ben at monsterads.com um, and send me an email um, for any inquiries or if you need any help or, you know, whatever it is. Uh, I'm, I'm always an open book. You can add, add me on Facebook, Ben Cagle. And um, anytime anybody sends me an instant message or anything on Skype, I always respond. I'm always available. I knew what it was like in the beginning to start off with not knowing anybody or not having a direction or a path and, you know, trying to put food on the table. And uh, because of that, I try to help as many people as I can. Well, Ben, we're blessed to have you. And uh, thank you for sharing your words of wisdom today. And until next time. Hey, thanks a lot, Chase. Thanks, Ben. Thank you, sir. Thank you for listening to the Beta to Boss podcast. For resources or to leave feedback, visit www.betatoboss.com or www.paycertify.com. If you haven't yet, you can subscribe on iTunes so you don't miss any future episodes. Remember to dream big and act on your dreams.